This is a regular meeting of the Cameron County Commissioner's Court. October 30th, 2007, it's now 5.30 p.m. As we do all meetings, we'll start with uh, an invocation, and I lost the card. Not yet, Jack. Thomas Caruba, pastor. And then I'd like to ask the Chief of Police, uh, Carlos Garcia, to lead us in the two pledges. But not right now, after the invocation. Go ahead, Thomas. Okay. That's right. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for today. God, we thank you, Lord, how you bless, how you just lead, direct, and guide. And Father, we ask, Lord God, for just your mind in everything that every decision that has to be made today, good and right decisions. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Chief, the U.S. flag and the Texas flag. Thank you, Judge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Pete, or whoever put it up there. I think that's the first time we've done it right, so. <laughs> it's a hard one. First item of the agenda. If I can just ask, I know everybody's important here, but if I can ask everybody just to uh, put their cell phones on vibrate so we don't disturb during the meeting, please. Including me. All right. Public comment. I have one public comment. Jack Gibson. Nice to see you, Jack. I haven't seen you in a while. My name is Jack Gibson. I live out in Adoria City. Uh, I'm here tonight uh, representing a committee that we have that we started out at Adoria City, the Adoria City Concerned Citizens Committee. Basically, we're just trying to do things that we think are, would help our community. And every once in a while, we run into some problems. Uh, that we need some help on, and I'm here tonight to discuss two of those. Uh, one is the Emergency Services District, and the other one is the Perennial Red River Services Corporation. Uh, since, <clears throat> if you'll allow me, I'm going to start with the Emergency Services District first because this will kind of tie in. Um, we have a few fire hydrants out at Odoria City. There are some liabilities issues that East Rio Honda Water Corporation has and they have locked the fire hydrants so that we can't, we can't use them. Uh, basically all we want to be able to do is go and use those hydrants to fill a pumper truck to be able to go fight a fire. We're not really looking to connect a hose to it and fight a fire there. But we had a meeting with East Rio Hondo last, this month at their regular meeting, a couple of weeks ago. And they're concerned about liability issues. And I can see their, I can see their point is just that somehow between y'all and us and East Rio Hondo, we should be able to resolve this. And from East Rio Hondo's position, they have unlimited liability. Uh, if somebody decides to sue them because a fire plug didn't work, wasn't enough pressure, whatever the reason, they can sue them for $200 million. The county, on the other hand, their liability, as I understand it through the tort reform, is limited to $250,000. And East Rio Honda wrote a letter to the Emergency Services District asking them if there was some way that they could get some help from the county to limit this liability issue. Um, they got a very short, as I understand it, very short letter back said no. Um, and that's where we need y'all's help because we're getting into a lot of, a lot of lawyer legalese that none of us really understand. All, all we know is there, there should be some way for, for this to be worked out 
where East Rio Hondo has some protection on or limit on their liability and still be able to supply, allow us to use, and, and when I say us, I'm talking about the Rio Hondo Volunteer Fire Department to use those uh, hydrants to, to fill a pumper truck. Uh, I'll give you an example of last week. On Tuesday, I was on my way up here. I got a call. We had a brush fire. We got it out. We got a call. We had another brush fire. As we were going in, we got a third call. So we split the equipment. We wound up going over about a mile south of 106 on Paredes Line Road, down a little road called Latina Road. We got over there. Fire is pretty close to some houses. Uh, we had 750, about 700 gallons of water on the truck. Myself and Bart Simpson were on the truck. We were able to manage. We were, we were able to control that to a point to where the houses weren't in danger, but then we were out of water. So we went to Rio Hondo. I'm, I'm sorry. We went to Aurora City to the fire station. Uh, discovered we were short of Union. We couldn't put water in at the fire station. There, there was one plug unlocked at Arroyo City. I don't know why it wasn't locked. I don't know if they didn't have the lock to do it or what. But anyway, we went up there. Took us about 10 minutes to put 1,000 gallons of water in the in the pumper truck. Went back and fought the fires. Uh, luckily, nobody was hurt. Uh, nobody lost any life or property. There was some brush burned up. But that's that is that's a real good example of what we're talking about. That's real life stuff. It's not hypothetical. Uh, now, and there's there's several problems here, and I don't really want to take up a lot of time tonight going into the problems of the emergency services district, other than to say there is a problem there. It needs to be addressed, and it needs to be addressed in a relatively short period in the future. Uh, I'll be more than happy to go into that in detail with whomever y'all suggest. The, the brush fires lead back to a more immediate problem, ongoing thing, Red River Services. We all got a notice last month. Hey, Jack, hold on. Before we go move on to the Red River issue, why don't we, if, if you'd like, let, let me have Commissioner Tamayo coordinate a meeting, if you haven't done so already, between herself, uh, uh, Johnny Cavazos, uh, somebody from our legal legal department, somebody from East Rio Hondo Water Supply, um, your group, and um, uh, myself, and maybe Pizza Pool, or somebody from his office, to, to discuss this with that, and then we'll. You know, then we'll come back to the court and see if there's any recommendations. So, if you'd like to set that up at some point, yes, I had already talked to Johnny Cavazos, and as I let you know, Jack, and he was to coordinate a meeting for us. Uh, but we had not included Pete Sepulveda, which I think is a very good idea, and the judge. And legal. So we need to do that, Johnny, uh, and uh, as soon as possible. Uh, we have two representatives from my advisory committee, the Commissioner's Advisory Committee from Arroyo City, that will be attending that meeting, uh, yourself and John, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, Jack. Yeah. So, uh, Johnny, I don't know how far you've gotten with putting that meeting together, but do include uh, Mr. Sepulveda as well as, as the judge and legal when we meet. Shoot like within the next couple of weeks, if you can, whatever, whatever everybody's schedule permits, okay? I didn't interrupt you, but I wanted to get that out of yeah, the way and then move on fine. to... You got it. We're, we're pretty flexible, so y'all work it among yourselves, whatever works best for y'all. Yeah, I, I think you'll find that Jack and John will make it, as long as you make it happen. All right. Thank you. Um, but to get back to the, to the Red River Services thing, everybody got a letter. They're going to quit picking up brush unless you call them. They're going to quit picking up heavy trash unless you call them. That's working real well. Joe called last week. Three days later, I got a call. First, they were, we were told they had to send somebody out, look at the pile, and tell us how much they were going to charge us. Number one is, I thought I was already paying for that service. Um, Joe called up there with another question along the same lines, and 
Uh, she hadn't heard from anybody for a week. Uh, talking to different people around today, people are making calls, they don't get through. They get, they get real frustrated in a hurry because they're never able to get through or they never get calls returned to them, so they call once and just quit. But the brush is going to be, is, is a problem. It's, it's a safety problem. The, the three fires last week that we made were started by people burning brush and or trash. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I, I'll tell you where I personally stand. I'm not getting full service that I signed up for, was forced to sign up for. I don't think I should have to pay my whole bill. And you're only going to wind up, I mean, you, you don't realize it, but people are really getting unhappy. I mean, to the point, they're talking about coming up here and dumping stuff out in, out in the parking lot. And I don't think anybody wants that to happen, but, but nothing really seems to be going anywhere. We've had the same problem for two and a half years. Jack, just, so just, just FYI, just to save you a little bit of time, we have a couple of items um, in executive session to talk about this, and I think that is probably going to be resolved, I hope, today. Uh, and if you want, you can, you can wait till we come out and listen to what's going to occur uh, at the end of executive session. Uh, but I think we're, you know, we're going to be recommending some things, and legals are recommending some things that might address some of your, the very concerns that, 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 that you're talking about right now. But I want, one thing I don't want to get lost in the mix is we signed up for, for a package of services. If we're not going to get all those services, we shouldn't be paying what we're paying now. That, I think that's very important. Um, that's pretty well, well, pretty well covered stuff that I, that I wanted to go over tonight. But it, it's just, you know, y'all are tired of hearing it. I'm tired of coming up here about it. But you, well, you shouldn't, you really shouldn't the, have to. And, but. And, the, and the one other thing I want, I want to address, and I've, I've spoken to this before, and I'm going to keep harping on it. When you all appoint people of these boards and commissions, you got to stop appointing political plums. You're going to have to quit making political payback with them. You need to start getting people on there whose main interest is taking care of the county and the, and the citizens of the county constituency. And, and if, I, if I trotted 100 people in here next week, I think they'd all agree with me that that's a, a big problem. That's one of the things, and I've harped on this and harped on it, and y'all are getting tired of hearing it, and I'm getting tired of saying it. But that's one of the things that got us in this mess with Red River Services was um, conflict of interest. Anyway, thank, thank you, Jack. Jack, and I'd like to, on a positive note, I want to thank your community, our community, Arroyo City, in the manner that uh, you, uh, you uh, responded to volunteering for the volunteer department, you and, and many others. I think you have how many volunteers We've out there? We've got nine right now. We've got nine a couple right now. So for Arroyo one. City, for the number of people there, that was a wonderful response. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Jack. Any other comment from anyone that uh, did not sign up? On the consent items, are there any items any member of the court wish to take out and discuss separately, that along with travel? Judge, items 26, 27, 30, and 35. 26, 27, 30, and 35. To discuss separately? Okay. Yes. I'd like to take out 36, having to do with the automobile burglary and theft prevention, and I will, uh, uh, Chief Garcia wants to make a short presentation. Uh, items 10, 11, and 12. Any, uh, any other items on travel? If not, do I hear, I'm sorry? On number 16, is there anything that uh, we need to discuss? No, on that one, no. No, okay. That's it. Do I hear a motion to approve consent items 
2 through 37, with the exception of items 10, 11, 12, 26, 27, 30, 35, and 36. And all travel items 38A through 38H. Do I hear a motion for approval? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Tamayo, second by Commissioner Gatza. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries. Uh, the only item that we can, I'd like to address before we go into executive session, because uh, Chief Garcia needs to, needs to scoot, uh, is item 36, consideration and adoption of a resolution acknowledging the 2007 Texas Automobile Burglary and Theft Prevention Authority Annual Conference in Cameron County, Brownsville, Texas, November 4th through November the 7th, 2007. Tony? Uh, judge, uh, commissioners, uh, this is the second time uh, our agencies, uh, my office, together with the Brownsville Police Department, has have uh, hosted this uh, this type of conference in Cameron County. The last time was 2001 at the island, uh, where we uh, had about uh, approximately 217 individuals to, that attended. This year uh, is in Brownsville, which is November the 4th through the 7th, and uh, we're here to to officially invite you to the to the conference and and uh, well I'll do that uh, the chief will uh, I'll hand it over to the chief please agenda judge commissioners good evening and thank you for uh, for allowing me to be one of the first ones up here I got to run to another meeting here um, on another project uh, as Mr. Sagita states uh, we're hosting the annual conference for the automobile uh, the auto and burglary and theft prevention authority conference we expect over 200 police officers throughout the state of Texas to attend this conference starting as of Sunday morning and running all the way till Wednesday afternoon. Uh, we take this time and the opportunity to formally invite all of you to attend our welcoming reception, which is going to be on Monday at 4 o'clock at the event center. Uh, we hope to see you there. Uh, I know some of you have been invited to do, say a couple of words. I think the county judge and our mayor and a couple of other people. Uh, the county commissioners, uh, if you can, please attend and, uh, the reception uh, and the welcoming on behalf of the, uh, of the Out of Depth uh, Mobile Prevention Authority. Uh, I serve on the board. I'm appointed by the governor, so it, it'll give me great pleasure and, and honor to have all of you there to show the support that you have for this program, especially uh, here in, in, in Cameron County, working hand-in-hand -hand with uh, Mr. Tony Saguirre and his group to try to prevent auto theft uh, and to reduce the number of auto theft incidents in, not only in the state of Brownsville but in the county of Cameron. Chief, and you know this morning we were at the uh, at this hearing, the, the auto theft issue came out. Commissioner Wood was there and, and he witnessed also the uh, the auto theft issue that, that was spoken to and um, I will tell you that that um, we've had a, a auto theft, as you know, an auto theft task force or auto theft surveillance at our bridge system for about 15 years and it appears that other ports of entry want to do the same thing. As, as when we adopted that program back in 92, it was simply just to deter auto theft and it, it worked. I think the auto theft uh, rate went down significantly, if I, if I remember the figures right. But now it's a little bit more than that. Now it's not only addressing auto theft, but as you know, we've got a lot of illegal contraband that's going southbound, cash, weapons. Uh, so there's going to be a little bit more. So I, I applaud your, your efforts to do this. Um, uh, we hope that we continue to enhance the auto theft surveillance program at our at our ports of entry. Uh, it's something that we need to do and, and expand it to have eventually canine units, uh, sophisticated equipment to to help this southbound traffic that uh, that is becoming more and more a threat to the border, as as you all know, Chief. So thank you. I will be there, and I'm sure everybody on the court will will make every attempt to uh, to attend the conference as well. And Tony, thank you very much for all the all the work that you do in your department. Well, I want to personally thank each one of you for uh, for supporting our our program. As you know, it started back in 1999, and uh, to date, uh, we've been able uh, to recover one 1,237 vehicles going through my office uh, or or vehicles uh, trying to get titled. Uh, that's a total of 18 million dollars worth of uh, vehicles that. That uh, we've been able to uh, to uh, to recover. As part of your packet, you have your your ID. Uh, uh, if, if you join us to get us into the well, conference or what? Okay. Well, for during the conference, and I'm um, hoping you guys can. Looking forward to it. 
Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Wood. I, I move to approve the adoption of the resolution. Second. Moved by Commissioner Wood, second by Commissioner Gass. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? And Chief, before you leave, I want to thank you. Uh, Yesenia in your office was extremely helpful to my office this afternoon in taking care of the issue. We appreciate it. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Do I hear a motion to go into executive session? Second. Moved by Commissioner Tamayo, second by Commissioner Gatsa, to discuss a whole bunch of items. Item A, confer with Commissioner's Court Legal Counsel concerning disputed monies regarding the lease agreement with GS Morgan Properties pursuant to Code Section 551.0712. Item B, confer with Commissioner's Court Legal Counsel concerning issues relating to possible acquisition of lots 1A and 1B, Block 122, Brownsville Original Town Site pursuant to Code Section 551.072. Item C, deliberation regarding lease of land for the right-of-way easement on property owned by Cameron County at the Free Trade Bridge, pursuant to Code Section 551.072. Item D, deliberation regarding real property concerning acquisition of parcels 9 and 11 for right-of-way for Dixieland Road Project, pursuant to Code Section 551.072. Item E, deliberation regarding real property concerning acquisition of parcel 1 for right-of-way for FM 732 pursuant to code section 551.072. Item F, deliberation regarding real property concerning acquisition of parcel 3 for right-of-way of FM 732 pursuant to code section 551.072. Item G, deliberation regarding real property concerning acquisition of parcel 7 for right-of-way for FM 732 pursuant to code section 551.072. Item H, deliberation regarding real property concerning acquisition of parcel 39 for right-of-way for FM 732 pursuant to code section 551.072. Item I, confer with Commissioner's Court Legal Counsel concerning request from the First Baptist Church of South Padre Island to open a road on county property north of the Convention Center pursuant to Code Section 551.0712. Item J, confer with Commissioner's Court Legal Counsel concerning Cameron County versus BFI Waste Collection and others, cause number 2005-07-3905-A, BFI Waste Services of Texas LP and Waste Management of Texas Inc versus County of Cameron in the 13th Court of Appeals, Corpus Christi, Texas, cause number 13-06-623-CV, and BFI Waste Services of Texas, LP, versus County of Cameron and Red River Service Corporation of Texas, Inc., case number B05279, for discussion of status pursuant to code section 551.0711A and B. Lastly, confer with Commissioner's Court Legal Counsel concerning Red River Solid Waste Collection Contract about issue of noncompliance or of default and possible litigation on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the governmental body under the Texas Disciplinary Rules Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with this chapter pursuant to Code Section 551.071A and 2. Thank you. to a possible acquisition of lots 1A and 1B. Do I hear a motion to acknowledge report of counsel? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Tamayo. Second. Do I have a second by Commissioner uh, Benavides? Question. Discussion. Be, right? Yes. Should we not also include there to authorize B to proceed as discussed in executive session? Do you, you want to add that to your motion? Yes, we will. Okay. Would. Add that to the motion. All those in favor, should I by saying aye? Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item C, deliberation regarding the lease of land the right of way. Yes, Pizza Pulveda. Uh, item C, deliberation regarding lease of land for the right of way easement of property owned by Cameron County at the Free Trade Bridge. Do I hear a motion to acknowledge report of counsel? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Tamayo, same by Commissioner Wood. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item D, deliberation regarding real property concerning acquisition of parcels 9 and 11 for right of way. Do I hear a motion? 
to accept or to offer the uh, for parcel nine four thousand and eight dollars, and for item and for parcel eleven fifty one thousand eight hundred five dollars. So moved Second. by Commissioner Wood. Second by Commissioner Tamayo. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item E, deliberation regarding real property concerning acquisition of parcel one for the right of way for FM 732. Do I hear a motion to pay the appraised value of $9,360 for that acquisition? So moved. Moved by Second. Commissioner Wood. Second by Commissioner Tamayo. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item F, deliberation regarding real property concerning acquisition of parcel three. For right away for for FM 732, do I hear motion to acknowledge the payment of uh, $62,175, which represents the appraised value? So moved. Moved by Second. Commissioner Tamayo, second by Commissioner Wood. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by, by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item G. Deliberation regarding real property concerning acquisition of parcel seven. For right of way for FM 732, do I hear a motion to acknowledge the payment of $76,359, which represents the appraised value? So moved. moved by Commissioner Gatza, second by Commissioner Tamayo. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item H, deliberation regarding real property concerning acquisition of parcel 39 for right of way for FM 732. Do I hear a motion to acknowledge payment of the appraised value? of $16,301. So moved. moved by Commissioner Second. Wood, second by Commissioner Gatza. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries, item I. Confer with Commissioner's Court Legal Counsel concerning request from the First Baptist Church of South Padre Island to open a road on county property north of the Convention Center. Do I hear motion to acknowledge report of counsel? So moved. moved by Commissioner okay. Benavides. Of second by- or Javier Mendez? Well, Javier Mendez and counsel. Uh, do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Tamayo, any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries. Item J. Confer with Commissioner's Court Legal Counsel concerning Cameron County versus BFI Waste Collection and others. Um, do I hear a motion to, to acknowledge the amendment to the contract with Red River? I think, Judge, you also have to uh, authorize the settlement and then to amend the contract. And authorize the, and authorize the settlement there, too? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Benavides, second by Commissioner Gatza. Let me have, take the opportunity to read how we're amending this contract. Section 14 shall be, and I'll give this to Laura, I'll give you a copy of this in case for your records. Section 14 shall be amended to add subsection 14.4. Red River Service Corporation may, at its sole option, choose to terminate this agreement upon a minimum of 120 days written notice. During that period between the giving of the notice and the date of termination, Red River Service Corporation shall continue to provide all services required by this agreement at the rates specified in the agreement. Section 5 shall be amended to add the following after the second sentence in Section 5. In order to ensure timely provision of brush and, brush and bulky waste pickup and ensure that only customers in good standing receive such services, Red River Service Corporation shall make available telephone, email, and U.S. mail contact points at which customers shall notify Red River Service Corporation when they have brush and or bulky waste placed for pickup. If the customer does not so notify Red River Service Corporation, Red River Service Corporation will only be responsible for collection of that customer's waste if it is placed physically adjacent to the 96 gallon container for that customer's account. Where the brush is probably pla properly placed adjacent to the 96 gallon container, Red River Service Corporation personnel collecting the 96 gallon container waste will identify the brush for pickup within a 30 day period. In this manner, Red River Service Corporation shall make brush and bulky waste collection available to each customer once per, once per month but in no event shall Red River Service Corporation be required to collect brush and bulky waste more than once each month. Okay, do I hear a motion for approval of that again? Do we have to approve this again? Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve the, the amendment to the contract? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Benavides, second by Commissioner Gatz. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, any opposed? Item carries. Please note that Commissioner Tamayo did not participate in those deliberations. Item K, that item was tabled and was not discussed, so having to do with court legal counsel in the Red River Solid Waste Collection contract. Moved by Commissioner Gatsa to table. Second. 
Second. By Commissioner Wood. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries. If we can go back to the items that were pulled out of consent. Let me start off with items 10, 11, and 12. And Netflix, these are pretty easy to answer. Just a question. Um, and why some of these, as an example, we're giving them three years to comply, another one we're only giving them a year, yet the one the year has got more lots, and the one we're giving them three years only has a handful of lots. That's my only question on those three. Uh, good evening, Judge and, and Commissioners. Uh, it, there, is a no, there, is a, there is no policy that says that you have to have a set time for extension of time for uh, unbuilt septic systems. Uh, normally we leave it up to the developer to, to dictate what, how much time he needs, but, but the minimum is, is probably just a year. But they can extend up to three years okay. and at, at their option as long as they provide the necessary documentation. So the developer is the one that provides you with the rec like for instance on item 10, exactly. he's got four septic tanks or four septic systems that are, that are still lacking. He wants a three year extension. Then you go to item 11, he's got 46 septic systems lacking. He only wants uh, a little bit over a year. So really the developers are the one that makes that call? That's correct. Would you, would you clarify that? Because yes. I'm having, and I understand yes, why, because right now we're not seeing as many lots being sold as we have in the past. So it's going to take some people longer to sell lots than others. And the developer's the one directing that, I think. But in these, you've got how many actual septic systems need to be placed in item 10 and in item 11? Because what I'm reading is confusing yeah, to me. I apologize to the court. Uh, obviously, there is some uh, uh, typo, typo discrepancies, yeah. and you know, I which apologize one again for that. Uh, I recommend that we table these three items and make the necessary corrections. I'll talk to my staff. Well, I don't mind changing them now. Uh, but I, I want to make sure that the number corresponds with the... With what there is Yes, there. sir. And I, I really recommend that we do that and that uh, we make the necessary corrections, bring them back to court uh, next Item week. 12 seems to be correct, unless you just want to... Well, it should be a nine there. It should be a Both nine. Both nines on item 12. Yes, sir. But I, I think we just, I would just recommend that, that we do it the right way, and I'll check with my staff. I move the table, 10, 11, and 12. Three items, 10, 11, and 12. Moved by Commissioner Wood, second by Commissioner Tamayo. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries. Item 26, consideration possible approval of an addendum number one in the amount of $69,756 to the owner architect agreement between Cameron County and Gomez Mendez signs. Judge, commissioners, um, we want to request to uh, table this item um, to allow us uh, Dilbia and, and Pete to, uh, so we can talk about um, the contract that we have with, with this firm and the, um, the increase in the, in the uh, fees. So moved. Second. Second. Moved by Commissioner Benavides, second by Commissioner Wood. Uh, just, a, just a quick question, Javier. Um, how, how come it got on the agenda for approval if it hadn't, if you hadn't run the traps yet with everybody? I'm sorry? Why did it, why did, I mean, if you're asking it to be tabled to run it through legal and through somebody else, who was it? Well, and I guess my question is, why did, it, how, why did we put it on if we hadn't run our traps yet with legal to get all this stuff taken care of? I think. Well, Judge, it didn't go to me. I think Richard signed off on this. And so I brought it up when I looked at it to you, Javier, that I had an issue with it. So Richard signed off on this one. Were you expecting to have these finalized before today? It, I was expecting to, but I mean, it, it could wait. Have a time limit. Okay, so I hear a motion to table item 26. Oh, I already did that. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor are by saying aye. Any opposed item aye. carries. Aye. Item 27, discussion possible action on the preparation and issuance of a conservation easement on land located at Andy Bowie Park Convention Center. Judge, commissioners, on this one here, <clears throat> we, uh, we were approached by um, a environmental firm, which is uh, SWCA and the uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And what this is, is in the background, um, I saw a, um, an aerial <clears throat> of this area. This is over by the Will Burden Center, uh, just uh, south of the Convention Center, where the existing nature trail is now. 
um, <clears throat> what they want to do is, is this, this land belongs to the county. And what they want to do is the area that's in yellow, um, these are areas that they've already identified where they can go in there and dredge um, and reduce the, um, the growth of the cattails. So what they want to do is, is um, get certain individuals that, that owe mitigation for certain projects within town or anywhere else to do this work, to do the dredging, and um, get credit through the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Now what we would have to do is we'd have to create that conservation easement um, so that they can get that credit. So <clears throat> the other thing that they mentioned to us, and just this is, this is um, just food for thought, but uh, what the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is telling us is that we could, because all this area is wetlands, we can't do anything with it anyway, we could identify or create a master plan for this area to sell or bank mitigation credit. Mitigation <clears throat> so it's going to do, do two things. It's going to reduce the cattails and improve, of course, the, the, um, the um, birding uh, attraction out there because uh, it's already, it's, 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 uh, the cattails have already taken over that area. So there's not a lot of bird watching you can do. So um, the other thing, of course, they would pay us money for, for those mitigation credits. Um, and the U.S. Uh, Army, Army Corps of Engineers told us that they would create that master plan for us, uh, of course, at no cost. How yet? Yes, sir. W one of the concerns I had was that was item number two on your background statement. And I was trying to figure out what, what you meant by that. What it was, Commissioner, is there was a gentleman, there, there's two people, there's um, a group that's built, that built a development on the, uh, on the bay side. I think they call it Tortugas or something, so it's like a restaurant. <clears throat> what he did was he went in there and mitigated and did some work out there on the bay side. Well, it didn't work. So the, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says you're going to have to mitigate somewhere else. So that was, that's one individual. The other person that's asking for, for um, mitigation credits on our land is a, is a uh, person that's building a residence on the island. And there's some areas right next door to his property, or actually on his property, but next to his building, that's wetland. So he's filled that in, or is going to fill it in, and he wants to use our land as, as those, for those credits. There's not very much land on the island that they could use for mitigation. And that's why they've come, come to us. Yeah, but is it right for us to use public property to offset an individual's mitigation problem with wetlands? I mean, well, <clears throat> I think legal might be able to answer that more so than you. You know, I mean, can I, we can we allow for someone to use mitigation credits that we as a county get and allow an individual who is doing an improvement on their property on the island needing credits to offset them by using county land to do that with? And, it, and, it's, and it's not uh, just to, to help build it, it's not uh, creating wetlands, it's enhancing, enhancing the wetlands, so. Well, you know, the bottom line right. is if somebody's giving us credit, mm -hmm. that is because there's something being created, mm -hmm. whether you, you call it enhancing or creating, mm -hmm. otherwise you won't get mitigation credits. That's correct. That's the only way you can get credits, you know. I mean, if we, if we start giving those away to enhance our property, you know, I mean, is, it, is there any value to us there? I don't, without looking at it further, I, I don't think that we could give someone else our credits. Um, I think that if the court wanted to create this for the court, for the county's benefit, they could do it. But I don't know that the Army Corps of Engineers, I don't, are they okay with this? Mm -hmm. Now, what they did suggest, though, in the future, that we could consider um, banking it. So, in other words, we would sell those credits to somebody. And just to give you an idea, they, they say up in you know other areas, um, Dallas and Fort Worth and San Antonio, you know, they go for twenty, thirty thousand dollars an acre. <clears throat> but there's probably maybe in more of an abundance of 
of areas that they could use for mitigation. Here on the island, there's, it's very limited, so that value may go up or could go up. I don't have a problem with the county enhancing the area and creating a nicer area back there. My only problem is allowing the mitigation credits to be utilized by a private individual. I understand. And, and That's just my, my only concern. Okay. And I know that we've, we've spoke with the uh, Economic Development Council on the island um, just to make sure that this work that they're doing would, would enhance their project. And they said it does. So um, that's why we continued the, the dialogue with, with these individuals and the uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Well, I see where legal signed off on it. Uh, you all didn't have a problem, uh, Delby? I wasn't really aware that the, the credits were going to private individual. Private individual. Oh, I, I thought we were doing it because the Army Corps of Engineers asked us to do it, which we've done before, I think, with Brownie Road Park. Mm -hmm. Um, we've done we've done an easement, so that's what I was under the impression. I wasn't aware that we were going to give the credits to an individual or private well, individual. So now so that have, you have that information, are you reluctant? I am reluctant, and I'd, I'd like to <coughs> talk to the Army Corps of Engineers and see why they are are okay with this. Because I, I don't think we could give if it's something of value, then we cannot give it away. Then evidently it is mm -hmm. something of value. Do I hear a motion to? Do I hear a motion to table the item so and have legal speak with the Army Corps of Engineers? Second. Moved by Commissioner Benavides, second by Commissioner Tamayo. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> item carries. Item 30: Consideration approval of memorandum of understanding between Cameron County, Texas, and the Community Development Corporation of Brownsville. Mm -hmm. Frank. Uh, Judge and Commissioners, the uh, county has received funding from the Texas Department of Housing and Community Affairs since 1996 uh, to provide a self-help uh, Colonia housing center. And since 1976, uh, the county has contracted with the Community Development Corporation of Brownsville, a local nonprofit, to provide the services. Uh, traditionally, uh, since 1996, the Community Development Corporation has used grant funds that come from the state or pass through the county to the nonprofit as provided by the legislation that created the uh, program. The funds are used by CDCB to pay for administration and operations, and they in turn leverage private dollars to provide housing construction and, and real, uh, housing rehabilitation activities. In this present contract, which the county entered into in uh, 2003 uh, with TDHCA, after the contract went into effect, the monitoring entity for the state, uh, the Office of Colonia Initiatives, came back to us and said that CDCB could no longer use their indirect costing approach to receive reimbursements for administration and operations. So we work with OCI and CDCB to try and find different ways to get CDCB reimbursements for work that had already commenced and was proceeding. We tried to do direct deliverables, which are using timesheets for actual activities. Uh, with OCI's direction, that didn't work too well. Uh, more recently, we tried to use grant funds to buy down the principal on loans made by CDCB. Some of those were accepted and some of those were not. Our contract expired, with the state expired uh, this past July. Uh, CDCB thus far has performed uh, uh, as expected, but has not been reimbursed for about half a million dollars. Uh, these are claims uh, that we submitted to the state on behalf of CDCB, but were rejected by the state uh, for for reasons that, uh, that they have. For example, the state has said that uh, some of these denials are based on their interpretation of HUD policy and, and decisions made by external auditors uh, after the contract began. Nonetheless, that leaves CDCB uh, out of uh, about half a million dollars in reimbursements. Earlier this summer, before the contract expired, the uh, CDCB board of directors came to uh, uh, Judge uh, Gospos and asked him to intervene 
to uh, request an appeal of the denials uh, to the state uh, board of directors for TDHCA. Uh, CDCB drafted a letter. Uh, the judge asked me for a recommendation, and I uh, told the judge and CDCB <coughs> that I would be comfortable with that letter going forward if we had an agreement with CDCB that held the county harmless in the event that funds are released and in some future case or future year, HUD or some other uh, federal or state entity comes back and tries to recapture those dollars. In other words, because we have a contract with the state, the state would come to us and we would have to go to CDCB. Uh, this agreement was finally uh, approved by their board, uh, I guess last week, uh, when I placed it on the agenda. Uh, so what we're trying to do is, is ask the state board of directors for TDHCA to uh, give us a second pair of eyes to give the contract another look-see to make sure that the decisions of OCI are the decisions that the state wants to make. I spoke to Michael Gerber um, oh, a week or so ago and he wants to come down himself and go over this uh, and see what he can do. Apparently there's some, some miscommunications. So uh, this, this protects us, this MOU, and we will continue working. I sent a letter that, that was drafted that was, I guess it got their attention. And um, so we hope to try to resolve this if we can. But this, this MOU kind of protects the county from any, any potential, uh, uh, I guess, payback. Recapture. You know, recapture, so that's it. it. That was the reason I was asking that we look at it and hear you, from you, Frank, is because, you know, I think that we need to have an MOU when we agree to the project we, from we, now on. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. From, you know, I mean, I think this MOU should have been part of the agreement with them when we allowed them we, to we, pass through us for the funding for that self-help colonia. I, I agree, uh, and, and we, we, we did have an agreement with them in place but that agreement expired when our contract with the state expired. Was it the same agreement? No, no. Was it, it holding us an indemnifying it, 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 account? It's more, it's more lengthy than that. It, okay. it, it says more or less the same thing, but it, it provides other protections. Other protections. Yeah. So, so the problem wasn't that we didn't have the right uh, terminology. It's that it expired. Uh, well, uh, the, the agreement uh, that we have with CDCB is an implementation agreement, and it no. and, and it okay. says different things. Basically, it says you will perform the work, you will get reimbursed if the state approves your reimbursements. Mm -hmm. and, and and what we're doing in this memo memorandum is is saying that okay, in the event the state does release reimbursements that they haven't released thus far, uh, and in the event the state comes back or somebody else comes back and wants their money, uh, then you will have to pay it back. It holds us. Yeah. So, so we're covered. It, indem with it indemnifies the county. I, 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 yes, sir. But I, I believe we're covered with the agreement that we had with CDCB uh, for the duration of, of the contract that we had with the state. And, and now that that contract has expired, this memorandum takes over. But we need to find out, though, or we need to make sure that most of the agreements we have in this type of projects end and the end of finalizing the auditing and the paying of the funds that are due or owed, you know, follows for six to eight months or a year sometimes on some of these projects. So we need to incorporate language when we do right. those agreements to not have to come back with an MOU. It right. needs to be included in the initial agreement. And, and I mean, it just, yeah. till everything is disposed of. I, I agree with we're you. Holding. This, this is sort of a unique case where uh, it, it's been a difficult uh, contract, uh, not only to administer, but to implement. Yeah. And it's a big amount. Yeah. Thank you, Frank. Do I hear a motion to approve by Commissioner Gaza? Do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Wood. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries. Item 35. Consideration authorization to award bids, RFPs, RFQs for the following. Mops and mats, rental and cleaning. Uh, Judge and Commissioners, uh, Mike Forbes is recommending that we table this item. Uh, and place it back on the agenda next week with a different recommendation. There is a local vendor with, uh, within the 3%. Okay. Do I hear a motion to table? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Tamayo, second by Commissioner Wood. Any further discussion? 
All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item 41, budget amendments, line item transfers, and or salary schedules. Uh, judging commissioners, within your packets, there were uh, various line item transfers uh, and one salary schedule. Uh, the, the line item transfers are basically just between uh, building maintenance or contractual to cover uh, an increase in the uh, pest control contract. And uh, the last one, in reference to the, the parks, is actually setting up the funding for the moving salaries from, from the community parks to Brownie Road Park for now that they're handling over the uh, teen center operations at Brownie Road Park. And the uh, salary schedule, uh, when we did the salary schedules inadvertently, the foreman within the colony access, the salary wasn't increased to match the other foreman's salaries, and this is correcting that. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Benavides. Do I have a second? Wait. I'll second it. Dr. Commissioner, got some discussion? Uh, the only question I have is the foreman in the Colonia projects, don't they usually have maybe like five men that they supervise versus the other foreman have like 20 or 36, 30 36. or whatever? You know, I mean, it's kind of just questions. Yeah, I think what we do, uh, Louis. Um, utilizes the foreman for different projects and they might be uh, handling multiple projects at one time. Um, I know that even like in the precinct two area, the foreman for um, the foreman for the, uh, the the road and bridge is also the foreman on the Gronia projects that we're doing in the Olmito area. I think we're doing that in the Harlingen area also and I think we've done that in the San Benito area. So they, since we get reimbursed from TxDOT, we can move them from job to job and just get reimbursed from TxDOT. Okay. No problem. Move to approve, Judge. Second. Moved by Commissioner Garza, second by Commissioner Tamayo. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any, appro any opposed? Item carries. Item 42, approval of claims. Any questions on claims? And, and include the uh, additional ones that were passed out. So I hear a motion for approval of claims. So moved. moved by Commissioner Tamayo. Do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Wood. All those in favor, signify by, by saying aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? Item carries. Please note my abstentions on the affidavits I provided. I think Commissioner Gans, I think I you also provided one. an affidavit to you. All right. Approval of minutes of October the 2nd, 2007. Move. Do I hear a motion to approve? Second. Move for approval. Moved by Commissioner Tamayo, so by Commissioner Gatza. All those in favor, signify by, by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Please note my abstention. I was not here at that meeting. But also, when you do the uh, when you do the minutes, up at the top it showed present, showed everybody present. Then underneath it had, I think, I think John, you and I were absent that particular day. So just kind of take them off the top that were just absent. Just do it like that. It was kind of confusing. Thank you. Uh, item 44, consideration possible approval of agreement with with uh, Thompson West for online legal research. Do I hear a motion to approve, or are there any questions? Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Benavides. Do I have a second? By Commissioner Garza. Any discussion? Is this for the legal department? Yes. yes. Okay. Which got what? Rob here? Is that? Well, it's Richard O'Burst. Richard O'Burst. Okay. <laughs> Three users. Yes. Check. Gotcha. Is, right. this, is this different than uh, Lex Nexus or Lex Nexus? Yes, sir. There's two types of services. There's Lexus Nexus and then there's West. So it is different. And they're both copyrighted, so they're okay. Right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item 45, consideration and adoption of an order creating the Cameron County Port Isabel Airport Zoning Board. Uh, judge and commissioners, um, as you're all aware, we've completed an action development plan that was funded 90% from the uh, Texas Department of Transportation Aviation Division. Um, and that plan, um, it outlines several improvements that needed to occur at the airport uh, and the last year or so, we've been uh, working with the Aviation Division at TxDOT in trying to get funding for some of those improvements. Uh, a couple of months ago, the court uh, passed a resolution where um, we received a grant of $1.6 uh, million, and then the county put in the, the 10%. Um, one of the requirements is that the county, by order, create an um, airport zoning board 
there's certain radius around the airport that the county uh, by statute is authorized to be able to zone and that is to prevent um, I think about a year ago we had a request from um, um, Department of Homeland Security to place a water tower and we had to look at that real carefully because the initial request was beyond the height limit that the aviation division was um, was recommending uh, in the past we've had one situation that I'm aware of where a tower went in uh, and it's within that radius and so that's the purpose of this board is to be able to zone that certain radius around the airport and avoid situations um, like that um, like that cell phone tower um, did get with legal um, under the statute that's listed in the in the order the county has authority uh, to create such a zoning board and, and that's staff's recommendation do I hear a motion to a to adopt so move Second. the order moved by Commissioner Garza second by Commissioner Tamayo any further discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye any opposed item carries item 46 discussion possible action regarding the appointment of members of the Cameron County Port Isabel Airport Zoning Board what's the number of the board five 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 and they would elect their own chairman and that's correct by what we just approved. I have a recommendation uh, David Garza not the commissioner, the one that from from Holland. Okay. He has a lot of experience. But I think the only issue did, did y'all clear that issue up regarding yeah. the RMA? Yeah. Okay. So Commissioner Tamayo, David Gadsa, not you. The aviation guy. The aviation guy. I had uh, Victor Trevino, who has public policy background. Currently, the city manager in San Benito. Okay. That I'd like to recommend. Commissioner, sure, would you have somebody already in mind? Eddie E. Hernandez. Who was that? I'm sorry. Eddie E. Hernandez. He's uh, represented the uh, Chamber of Commerce on the MPO for many years and dealt with TxDOT directly through that board. Good. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Benavides, do you have somebody in mind? I have Evelyn Dale. And I'd like to recommend uh, Roman Espatza from South Padre Island. Thank you. All right. And I assume everyone has talked to their members and they're willing yep. to serve on this board, right? Yep. Okay. All right. Do I hear a motion to approve uh, David Gassa, the aviation guy, Victor Trevino, city manager, Eddie Hernandez, Eddie E. Hernandez, Evelyn Dale, and Roman Espatza? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Gatza, second by Commissioner Tamayo. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries. Aye. Item 47, consideration possible action to allow Roban contractors <clears throat> temporary use of land for a laydown yard to store construction equipment and material at Andy Bowie Park for the World Birding Center Boardwalk Project. Judge Commissioners, this is um, item I believe was tabled uh, oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't tabled. Um, direction was is to go back to the uh, contractor and see if he would pay us, um, I believe it was $500 a month um, for, the, for the length of the term. And um, what he did was he wrote me a letter back saying that, you know, um, the amount that we were requesting was, of course, too much. It was, you know, over budget or, or whatever, over what <clears throat> he had, um, would expect, expect to pay, and he didn't have anything within his budget to, you know, for, for a lay down yard and so on. And he kind of explains that in that letter that I, that I submitted in the backup. Um, in the very bottom last paragraph, he's, he's asking um, if we would consider $150 per month. Um, <clears throat> in addition to that, the, the, the second paragraph, um, talks about him helping us install some pipes across Park Road 100, Park Road 100. <clears throat> and what that was is um, we had talked to the to the uh, developer of Ocean Towers while they were doing their construction to cut across the road if they would lay a, a, a conduit for us um, in the event that we would need to cross utilities um, it's or the pipes already there um, so we did that we gave him the pipe they cut the road and they installed that pipe for us. Um, <clears throat> so that's what he's, he's, I guess, in consideration, he's, he put that in the letter. But um, the last thing, of course, is the, uh, he's uh, offering us $150 per month. Um, 
Pete was uh, suggesting maybe that you know we could, if we get direction, maybe go talk to him tomorrow um, and see if we can bump that up um, a little bit, maybe three hundred dollars or or so. How many months are we talking about? Seven months. Seven months. I mean, it's a worthy cause. I mean, do y'all really want to? Well, we're scramble for a couple <clears throat> hundred bucks. No. I mean, no. Now I'm, I move that we go ahead and approve it. It's all going back to the we'll Burger Center anyway. Second. So I was moved by Commissioner Gatza, second by Commissioner Wood, to accept their offer of $150 per month for whatever time frame that they needed, the seven months. Mm -hmm. I'll bring back next week a uh, license agreement or whatever we need to do. Plus their support of Highway 100 drainage and whatever it is that they're putting in. Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor, sign by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Last item, discussion and possible action regarding the county, state, and federal legislative agenda. David? Judge, Commissioners, um, yesterday and, and part of the day-to-day, -day, the Mexican-American Legislative Caucus was in town. These are members of the state legislature that were here to, um, to listen to the concerns of the local community and to uh, basically tour and, and, and see the border um, in response to the $100 million that, that the legislature appropriated and the governor has since formed the Border Security Task Force that Judge Caspas is the chairman of. Um, <clears throat> Judge Commissioner Wood, um, Pete, and myself had an opportunity to visit with them yesterday afternoon and uh, talk with them at length um, about what we've been preaching for the last, you know, a few months. And then today, this morning, Judge Casco's had an opportunity to, to testify in his capacity as the chairman of the task force and in his capacity as county judge. Um, basically, the same message was sent. Um, to them um, you know, regarding the, the issues that we're facing um, on a day-to-day -day basis, and that being um, the issue of border security and, and uh, uh, illegal activity, and then the, the, the primary issue we're looking at right now, which is the, the border wall and how we have uh, viable and alternatives and options that the judge and, and a lot of you have been talking about, which is the levy um, rehabilitation and the Weir project. And so <clears throat> they had an opportunity to listen firsthand to Border Patrol, to um, some of the other local officials, and take back some of the ideas that, you know, that they're going to be looking at next by the next legislature in 2009. Hopefully, you know, we'll continue to talk in these venues and continue to, to hopefully get our point across to the federal government, to the state government, you know, that, that we need to look at the option of like the judge said this morning, the moratorium on, on the uh, border fence and other issues that, that can help us out with respect to um, border crossing and, and the efficient flow of, of trade and commerce. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Judge. Well, no, I mean, I think the, uh, uh, the Senator Cornyn is recommending a moratorium until IBWC comes back with a, with a, with a recommendation on the levy system. I'll tell you, it was advice today that, that Michael Chertoff is still planning on, on, on visiting Cameron County. Uh, we had tried to get it scheduled for right after Thanksgiving. Uh, schedule didn't permit, so we're hoping before the end of the year he makes a trip to Cameron. Uh, it'll be a very, very, very limited group of people that will, that will sit in uh, to talk with him about it, but I think the message has to be loud and clear. Show him exactly the the design that was worked on in terms of the of the levy and the, and the retaining wall that, that Carlos Marin had done. Um, and the good thing is we're getting him down here again, and and then hopefully we'll be able to you know to share our thoughts with him and, and hopefully uh, kind of see it favorably towards our way because it's ultimately his decision. I did talk with the Border Patrol chief today uh, at length, and and he. The local border patrol chiefs have a lot of input. They have a lot of authority into what recommendations they, they, they make to, sec to the secretary. Uh, and, and they want to work with us on this. So we'll just, you know, just kind of hope for the best and, and hope that we can somehow mitigate this, this wall issue. If you plan on attending, you need to get your credentials in pretty early because he refused to allow the mayor to sit in on the meeting last time he was here. Well, I'm setting, I mean, well, we're setting it up. I'm sure we'll, we'll be okay. Um, uh, the credentials, I think, have already, well, mine have already been done, so. But anyway, again, it'll, you know, we'll let you know. I, I tell you, it's not going to be open to, to a whole lot of folks. Uh, he's just coming in and out. Uh, 
you know, just for a, for a quick meeting, but we'll do everything we can to get the, the people that need to be there to be there. Okay. That's it for Thank you, David. Do I hear a motion to acknowledge Mr. So Garcia's report? Second. by Commissioner Tamayo, signed by Commissioner Wood. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, that and carry. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. Move. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gatza, second by Commissioner Tamayo to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carries. God save this honorable court.